Well, it's just a batch of does. But another month, a couple of weeks go by, the bucks will be looking for them, and that's what I'll be looking for in my muzzleloader hunt. Yeah, I can sit and watch you guys all day. How you doing, guys? I uh, got some parts today, so I've got just about everything I need to finish this. Um, as you saw, I went out calling today, and uh, no dice. The, the deer season just ended yesterday, and this area has really getting, really got hit hard with uh, archery hunters for elk, uh, bull hunters for elk, deer hunters. Um, it's going to take uh, probably a little bit of time for it to settle down and the coyotes will kind of come back to the areas that they were before that. Anyway, um, as you saw, I ran into some deer, which is Always nice to keep track of them does. The time my muzzleloader season opens, there'll be bucks sniffing around them. So, got that done. I thought I'd come back and get this barrel seated in the, in this channel. Uh, let's see. The first thing I got to do is I didn't finish the flats on the... I got one, two, two, three sides uh, on this breech plug. To, uh, file down and once I get that filed down then I'll I'll fit it in here and and uh, clean out this barrel channel and get the set I like starting with the barrel and I kind of work the barrel and the lock together um, this one's a cap lock that's more precise the the, the hammer and the inlet for the uh, lock plate has to be pretty precise so that the hammer hits the nipple. On a flinter it's not so bad. You got a little leeway there where you can drill the hole wherever the pan comes out to uh, within reason. So I'm going to get started on this and this is going to be a nice gun. This is uh, going to be a 58 caliber Hawken. It's going to be a fun build and you guys are welcome to join in while we're doing it. Anyway I'm going to get these polished off and and get started on it. First, you gotta drop the pile it down. It's about 30 thousandths too big. So, first, I file it down to where it's closer to the size of the barrel, and then I, then I gotta draw file it so that it all comes out even and straight. This is the first flat past the top, so I want it to be perfect. And then the next one needs it, and the bottom flats need a little too. And uh, I like to get them all looking nice. Okay. It's not finished work, but it's even enough that we can use it to cut an active barrel, ch barrel channel. So, first thing I want to do is get my pencil. Okay. All right. So I got my chisels and let's go to work. My chisels getting the Really tight spots. Get that down in there. And then the other spots that aren't so tight, I'll work with some really rough sandpaper. But I got some points here to stuff in the Maybe be chasing this a little. And I'll work it out with sandpaper. Pretty close cut though. Then I'll then I'll have to get the for inletting the um, hang. I got it here somewhere. Then that metal will also have to be 
Yeah, it's going to have to be fitted down so it's the same size as the barrel flats. So when I inlet this in here, it will uh, it'll be the same size, and I won't have. If I inlet it now, it'll be too big when I try to file those down, even with the barrel flats. So and another thing that I like is this flat scraper. It takes off more wood than sandpaper, but it takes it off in better control than a single chisel. I really like this one. It takes a lot of shavings off quick. Okay, back to Keep checking, make sure they don't go too far. Oh yeah. Too close. Yep, it's getting pretty close. A little sandpaper work. And I like to make this kind of tight because then when I draw file the barrel down, and after I stain it uh, and drop out of the barrel, the fit will be just right. I mean, not real tight. You should be able to pop it out pretty easy. See, this is well, still too tight. I get it to work. Anyway, it's getting there. Squeeze it down there. Uh, close. And I don't mess with the chisels too much. I'll start out with some 60 grade sandpaper. And, uh, Knock it down until it will slip in there a little easier, and then I'll work into a hundred grain, and then uh, then I'll put some black on it and make sure it's touching everywhere on the bottom. Sometimes when you cut these channels, they're a little bumpy, and uh, this one's looking like it's going to be good. But if you black the barrel and put it in there and tap on it, you'll find some high spots, and that's. You want the barrel to sit as much on the on the wood as possible, as much contact as the wood as possible. That's what I like. So you got to be careful not to. This has to be straight up and down against that flat. If you lean it towards the outside of the rifle, you end up getting a gap between the barrel. In the wood and it still won't go all the way down so I gotta be careful and keep that straight up and down as I can so that that side is formed level with that barrel when it goes in there. I've marked this here and it's mostly on this side where it needs a little bit more coming off. I found that Pump in the center and took that out. And it's going in and out kind of easy. So, and I gotta make sure I take my posing flat down just a little too so that it'll sit right in there and sit on that, that flat. This right here is really is almost just right. Just a little more, just keeping it level. I'm gonna go to a, I'm gonna go to the hundred here in a minute. Hundred sandpaper. So it's starting to go in and out like really nice, and the way I like. And it just drops right in. It's a little tight in spots. Comes out easy, and get it started. Get it started straight. Just falls right in, and it's all the way down. It's got to be straight, though. I guess there's a little knob over here. I got to knock that falling in straight. Falls in straight. It goes right down. So probably just a little tight, but. A little more sanding and 
Like I said, I like the way it comes out. It pops right out. So just a touch more sanding and uh, that'll be done. Anyway, it's really nice outside. So I think I'm going to stuff some powder down one of these barrels here and go out and I put up a target yesterday up on the hill and I got three or four different positions I can shoot from 113 yards to 80 yards. And then I got a little target out here. Uh, it's just one of them knock around targets, but the squares are about that big. It makes a pretty challenging target at 25 yards. So I think I'm going to go out and practice with uh, my hunting gun for a little while while the weather's good. Anyway, uh, Dave Morelli here. I'll see you next time. Have a good day.